no! Oh, no, I... no! Oh, oh, we're not out. Oh my god. No! <laughs> this is just a let's play where you watch computer players play Mario Party. <laughs> Hey, what's going on everybody from Digital Doc Games? I am Digital Doc and you are watching Game Changers. It's the show where we play a game with the people changing the game. Today, we are joined by Dr. Rachel Cowart. She's a world-renowned researcher on the uses and effects of video games, including their impact on physical, social, and psychological well-being. She's also the research director at Take This, the mental health non-for-profit in gaming, and founder and host of the YouTube channel Psychgeist, where she explores the science of games. Today, though, she's here to play a game of Mario Party Superstars, the latest installment in the minigame-filled Nintendo series, where you have to race to get the most stars and sabotage your opponents along the way. Dr. Cohen. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. And may I say, Amiad, only you would get me to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I know you have gone on the record before saying that <laughs> Mario Party ruins relationships. How are you feeling before we get into this? It does. Game? Well, we're going in with a mutual understanding that we will still be friends. Yeah. Um, at the end of it. But I've played this in the past with other friends who take it real seriously. And anyone who's played Mario Party knows the game is unfair. It just randomly gives stars to people. Like, it's just the way the game is. So we're going in with that knowledge. Are you ready to, to test our relationship to see if it's <laughs> strong enough to, to withhold the Mario Party curse? All right, let's do it. That's not, not the way you want to start, Rachel. Wow. Last place roll there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for rubbing it in. <laughs> All right, we're trying to maintain the relationship. Okay. I'm, maintain. Just, I'm just gonna let you go first. You know, if there's any bridges That's that right. fall, you That's can right. just, you just go on. All right, so my question for you is as follows. Yes. Um, I really, I, I always find it interesting talking with people who pivoted their careers from one area of focus into something unexpected, which is certainly the case with you pivoting into video games research from your initial focus of counseling psychology. Wow. Was there a moment in time that you can think back to where the path forward became clear or has it been a more misty road that only becomes clear once traveled? Oh, that's a great question. I, I it was misty. It was curvy. It was yeah. <laughs> it was definitely not clear from the beginning. You know, when I was getting my masters, I um I've told the story to you before where I was seeing parents that were concerned about games and and there wasn't any research at the time and that's when I decided to do a research-based PhD looking at games. But even with that, I was just doing it because I wanted to. Like, mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking like, this is a career and this is, you know, I was just like, oh, if I have a PhD, I could do a lot of things. Lots of different doors will open for me, whether it's like, you know, research for a company that's not even related to games, for instance. So being able to have a career like at Take This, um, doing my YouTube content that's specifically focused on games and psychology. That's like a dream that I didn't even know was a possibility. Right, honestly. right. All right, you ready to head into our first mini game? <laughs> no, I'm not, but whatever. <laughs> we'll start it up anyway. <laughs> this is not going to end well for me, friends. Okay, here we go. I'm just, oh my God. All right, I feel like maybe we could team up, you know, take Let's someone out. To, I'm going to get Luigi. I'm okay, try. all right. Let's get Luigi too. Oh, this spin attack is not... This there is, okay, so this is when the world learns. My depth <laughs> perception is terrible. Did you fall? Yes. Oh no, Rachel, <laughs> I went back to Oh no, no. Oh, Luigi. Oh. <laughs> you gotta oh, hate Luigi. it when, when the computer wins. Rachel, what's a lesson or skill that you learned in school for your PhD that you now use in an unexpected way? And Ooh. if you were to go the other way and head from a career in video games into counseling psychology, what's a skill you've learned that would make you a better psychologist? Ooh, I'm gonna answer the second one first. Mm -hmm. um, the cultural competency in and around games, I, I know a lot better now than I did before. So <clears throat> a lot of my work, or not mine specifically, but the work of Take This is talking about how games 
can be tools for social connection, they can be tools for stress relief, and they're not just kind of uniformly negative impacting people, um, as is often believed. And it's really important, I think, for mental health professionals to understand that. So when someone comes to their office and says, I play games, the initial reaction isn't, this is the heart of the problem and, and we need to you know, fix that. Um, going the other way around, a PhD damn, damn, teaches you a lot of things. <laughs> um, it teaches you persistence mm. and it teaches you, I would say, critical thinking. And both of those things have served me well in all areas of my life. Yeah. Uh, you know, persistence with making a YouTube channel, as you know, well know, is an uphill climb from the. Yeah. From right, right. Uh, critical thinking in this age of disinformation <laughs> has been very helpful um, in, in other areas of my life. Okay, you feel like you're ready for the real thing? No, but okay. <laughs> Let's do I it. I hate to be the one setting the pace here, you know. I Let's do it. Yeah, I think I think we got this one. That's all right. The world can know that this is why Rachel doesn't play Mario. All right, <laughs> okay, hold on. You know what? Let's let's give you a chance here. This is also we're getting all of the mini games um, that I've never played before. Oh, nice. That's good. That's yeah. good because yeah, I'm pretty new to these too. Mash the button. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, I, no, no. Oh, oh, we're not out. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a let's play where you watch computer players play Mario Party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As part of your job, you get to wear many different hats, whether it be podcasting, talking with the ESA board, or advocating for mental health and video games. But never do you get to wear a more diverse set of hats than when you are deeply invested in a Dungeons and Dragons game. From <laughs> Enkai the Druid Sailor to Ishka the Pirate Captain, is there a D&D character that you are most proud of? Oh, you uh, this question might make me cry. I'm feeling very nostalgic about D&D lately um, because the game is coming to an end and the game, I joined the game three years ago. The game I play is called Clinical Role. Um, but it's been going on for like five, six, seven years. Um, I love my pirate captain, Ishka, because she takes no flack from anyone. Like she just doesn't care. Um, and the people I play with are very good D and D players. And I play with Dr. B, who's the clinical director of Take This, and he's very kind of like emotionally laden into his character. And then my character rolls up and she's like, nah. <laughs> like, I'm not interested in hearing what you have to say about that. And it's really fun because that's not how I am. Uh, yeah. alive. Um, but it's fun to just kind of play that character in a, in a safe space. Yeah, D&D like &D is fun. It's, um, it's, it's stressful. I remember the first time I actually played D&D, when I played my character, they were like, what's your character doing? And I was like, oh, you know, she's climbing a mountain. And they're like, what's her hair look like? And I was like, I don't know. It's <laughs> blowing in the wind. And they're like, well, that's impractical. And I'm like, oh, right. Oh, so <laughs> there's, there's a lot of judgment that comes with yeah. that. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of things to learn. And then they're like, well, what would she say? And, you right. know, I'm used to playing turn-based RPGs. I'm like, I got to come up with the dialogue? Yeah. I don't know oh. what she's saying. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh yeah! DK ah. takes it. There we go. There we go. Very good. Rachel, nothing gets you on your soapbox quicker than hearing someone say that video games cause violence. It makes me think of all the other false narratives out there that so easily get passed around, especially now in the age of social media, where both good and bad information is more accessible than ever. Are there some other non-video game related misconceptions or things that people might be quick to say in everyday life that just gets your blood pumping? Oh, great question. First um, start, by the way, just gonna throw that. First start. I, I don't know how it happened, you know but. What? I'm happy Luigi didn't get it. Uh, um, yes, that's job. right. We job, win though. if Luigi loses. Yeah, now we're just, we, are, we have a joint effort now to just bring Luigi down. Um, <laughs> I have a book, it's called, um, Is Everyone an Expert? I forget um, who wrote it, but it was way ahead of its time because it's like more than 10 years old. But the idea that people watch one YouTube video, I get the irony here. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> read one article um, and consider themselves an expert, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, whether on something that they are not an expert on, whether it's, you know, 
vaccine efficacy that's very relatable now sure. or whether it's i don't know how to fix a car anything anything that they're not an expert on you don't know more than the person who studied it yeah <laughs> So don't watch one YouTube video unless it's mine because mine are very well informed. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. <laughs> or yours. Yours are also very well informed. There you go. Um, and, and think that you know more than someone else. You should always seek out, you know, more than one piece of information. So that really irritates me. I always thought that's the best as that that's that's the, the true aspect of a good learner and probably even just an intelligent person is someone who knows what they don't know. A hundred percent. And, and um, this is what I talk about critical thinking. This is where critical thinking skills come in. Because even for me, I watch, read one article. I don't just say, I found the evidence. This is it. No, right. I look for something else that supports it by somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was quite the turn for you there, Rachel. I you got, got a star, star, you slid down and on your on your tummy in a real cute way. And now I you're know. in a good position. Yes, really you were good. bringing it back home. Oh, but now we've, we've, we've all decided to team up against you here. Uh, what? So you need to. I need to okay. roll. Oh, all right. Uh, all right. Shoot. Well, the, you know, I'm in a barrel, so this is like Donkey Kong. I'm going to be disappointed if you don't smash this barrel. Really good call, but this is where I wish we were playing with two other real humans because I'm not, I'm not convinced that my computer buddies. Whatever, they're the they're trip. pretty good. They're we'll hard. We'll what? see how it goes. You you just keep on rolling, Rachel. You roll along. <laughs> in real life. This would make me motion sick. <laughs> so it came from somewhere. Oh, it came from definitely. It is funny how D&D &D really does bring well, out parts of you, even if it's unconscious, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. Because you got to pull that out from somewhere. You do. Like the motion sick thing. Oh, 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 yes. Thank you. Is that Peach? Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry I spoke, I spoke low of you before. Rachel, you've made your way around the podcast scene, always offering some great insight into the science of video games and mental health. If you were to be on a podcast and could choose to talk about something entirely different from those topics, maybe it's a hobby that you do or something that is less known about you, what would you come on to talk about? Um, this may not surprise you because we were talking about it earlier, um, but I, have, I write, I do creative writing. Um, as an outlet for my creativity. Um, and I have published, uh, kickstarted a collection of children's stories in 2019. And I'm writing some short stories now from that universe. And I'm gonna actually kickstart them later this year. So watch this space. Um, so I would love to talk about children's literature. Yeah. Um, not as much like the writing and the writing process so much as the importance of, of children's literature and representation and how every child deserves to be the hero of their own story and that you're twice or you're three times as likely to see a talking animal than you are a child that is of a minority group wow. being the main character in the children's story, which is absurd. Yeah, you said that you first kind of had the idea from Pragmatic Princess after going to a garage sale and kind of looking yeah. through the books and seeing that there was a lack of, of representation of, of strong you know, female uh, protagonists or even just everyday female protagonists. Yeah. Um, and as you know, having my own daughter that I, who loves to read and I love to read books too, I, I certainly see that as well. Um, so Pragmatic Princess, which is the collection of 26 stories of everyday girls solving everyday problems. Uh, if you were to choose one of these 26 girls that you could bring to life and hang out with with the day, who would you oh. want to spend the day with? Oh, that's a good question. <clears throat> who would I want to spend the day with? Um, I love them all so much. I am going to say Ruby. Ruby is Ruby the Ready, and she has a giant backpack full of like everything you could possibly need. Yeah. Um, it was inspired by that Shel Silverstein. I love Shel Silverstein. Um, his poem, he has a poem about like a big stack of like objects, and it's like, and it's a flashlight, and a, and a batteries, and a this, and a that. And it was really inspired by that. So I'd hang out with Ruby, because Ruby's got everything you need. All right, I think I, I think I get this one. I think this is Yeah, I've done this one. This is just button mashing. Button mashing, yeah. A and B together. OK. And then you only have like 10 seconds to button mash it. It's a good yeah. thing I have large thumbs. Ah, well, you might have the advantage. Yeah, not unlike DK himself. <laughs> Look, he's only doing it with one hand. Yeah, look no, at that. Flex. Look at that flexing. Yeah. Come on, green. Yellow. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Oh Yellow. my god. Oh, it's really teasing you here. Oh, come this on. Could be anyone's game. Oh, come on. Ugh. Oh no. Oh no. Blue is really frightening me. 
getting too close for comfort. Oh! I didn't even come close there. Come on. You're still in the race. My big thumb failed oh, me. Oh, what? I think that's you. I think that's Is you. It? There you go. Well done. Well, it's slow clap, slow clap. Very good. Rachel, in addition to being a PhD and expert in, si in the science of games, you're also a self-proclaimed Cavill influencer <laughs> to the point where you have gone from fan to even implementing your appreciation for Henry Cavill in your content on Zeitgeist, effectively creating, and I quote, science with a side of thirst. I love so it. What I have are some interesting Cavill fun facts, but oh. there is a caveat. Okay. Some of them are too interesting to be true. Okay. So I'll give you the Cavill fun fact and you tell me if it's true or false. Okay. You ready? Yes. All right. Number one, Henry Cavill is a big fan of the online massive multiplayer game World of Warcraft, and it almost cost him his job because he nearly missed the call from Zack Snyder with the casting news for Man of Steel because he was so engrazed in playing. I'm going to say that's true. That is true. Yes, that is that true. Is and when I learned that fact, I thought, ah, I see. I see. You see, you see why I have the love. That's right. I also played a lot of World of Warcraft. But is he Alliance or Horde? We'll never know. I don't know. What do you when think? When I meet him, a lot. That's actually fact number two. No, I, I, I don't. I oh, don't. oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes, when you inevitably meet him. I'm pulling out the big guns for this one because. I want also, to get that start. Before we go more facts, I just yeah. want to say, I know I'm a self-proclaimed Cavill influencer, but I have been endorsed by Netflix. Uh, you were retweeted by the official Witcher account, right? I was retweeted and I told them, I, you see, I told you I was a Cavill influencer. It's going in my bio and they responded, we'll allow it. There so, you go. It's That is as official as an influencer can get. So, <laughs> yes. but, but you do still have to answer the rest of these questions. Yeah, the next course. one, is that Henry Cavill's real name is not actually Henry, it's Harry. That's hard because Harry's a very popular British name. Uh, I'm gonna say false. Yeah, I, I had a hard time. I felt like I was cracking <laughs> there. <laughs> that is, that is very false. made up. That is very made up. Because I feel like I've looked at his Wikipedia page. You know, I gotta learn about who yeah. I'm um, yeah. And I feel like he's got a very long, like fancy sounding name. Um, and I don't remember it not being Henry. Okay, well, how about this one on his Wikipedia page? Okay. Henry adopted a bat and named it Ben for Ben Affleck. That is not true. That is true. What? That is true. Yes. I did, I did know he enjoyed, because he was in the Batman. Was he in the... No, yeah, well, Batman versus Superman, Batman? right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't watch the Ben Affleck Batman movie. That's, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. You ready for an epic game of hide and go seek? Let's do it. Let's do I it. love that I, I'm the one that has to guess. Like yes. I have any idea what you're choosing, but sure. They, I know, right? This is all skill here. This all is a, yeah, all skill. Uh, this is another one of those games where <clears throat> I say Mario Party ruins relationships because this, like, and I've played before where I'm hiding and yeah. it doesn't even show your avatar like anywhere near the actual thing that you're hiding. Like it's just random where it shows yeah. you like running around. Oh, there goes Luigi. Yes. But good first out. Even though he's on my team, I want him gone. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's out. If, even if I lose, I'm satisfied now because I got him. Oh, so I get it. So I'm not even in control of where they're going when you're. No, open. you're it's only open. in control of where you're going. Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, I'm like clicking buttons. Oh man, Rachel. It's all luck. Uh, no, you're, it's it's years of playing hide and go seek with your kids. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one. Although my kids are the age where they hide, like, I don't know, behind a chair where you can oh, yeah. see, like, <laughs> a right. clear chair. Yep, yep. My daughter has the same exact hiding spot every time. Well done. Well done. Thank you. I'm surprised I pulled up now. 110% skill. Yeah. Rachel, in terms of scientific accuracy, what's mm -hmm. the most underrated game depiction of mental health? Oh, underrated. Because, see, mm. I would say Hellblade, but that's not underrated. I purposely put in underrated because yeah. I, I didn't want to talk about Hellblade because it's just too obvious. It's just too easy. Oh, man. I mean, I don't know. Stardew Valley, I talk about a lot in terms of mental health representation. And it's not an underrated game, but okay. I would say outside of my, like, specific circle of people I talk to, it's not necessarily one people talk about in terms of mental health representation. Mm. Um, have you played Stardew Valley? I haven't played it. I've seen gameplay, though. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you have a farm and it's, um, it's like an, 
it's like Har a Harvest Moon type game. Uh, you can romance the people in the village. And I will say when I first started playing, there's a guy named Shane and I was like, I'm gonna romance him, he's cute. And he was such a jerk. Like, <laughs> he was like, I don't got time for you. I'm like, who is this guy? So instead of Shane, I was like, he's kind of a jerk. I'm gonna romance Harvey because he's the medical doctor who likes cheese and wine. And that's up my alley. Yeah, um, right. But it turns out I'm actually kind of a jerk because Shane has a substance abuse problem and is depressed. And if wow. you pursue through his storyline, it's actually really beautiful. Um, that wasn't so good. I feel, you know, shame about shame because I should have just been kinder to him instead of just saying he was a jerk and, and walking away. Um, but there's a lot of really interesting storylines in Stardew Valley that are very hopeful and nuanced and, and beautiful, like Shane's kind of redemption story he kind of hits rock bottom and then you help him get better. And then in the end, he's like raising chickens. He has a chicken hmm. farm. It's very wow, sweet. that's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I think that's a perfect answer because I never would have known that about Stardew Valley, especially as someone who hasn't played it. Yeah, great, yeah, great, there. yeah. It's, um, it did win a Dr. Mark Award for Mental Health from Take This. Um, the first Dr. Mark Award, which is for hopeful and accurate representation of mental health in game. So it's not like totally underrated, but yeah, right. I think it's not a common thing. People just think, oh, it's a farming simulator, but the storylines are really beautiful. Great, great. I'm very upset that I got a five and not a six there because I'm one away from that star. Are you? One away. I'll get it next time, but- Only one turn left. I know, but I thought maybe if I got a big roll and I could get a warp, you know, we could make something happen. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Ooh, look at this 3D shoot game. Shoot the rival tanks. Shoot the rival tanks. So shoot upwards. Oh, oh yeah, this is my great. kind of game. Shooter. Uh, this is, I will be honest. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on. This is not my kind of game. Yeah. This is gonna, Okay, I like I like yeah. this. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> All right, can we agree to go after Luigi first? Let's do it. Let's do okay. it. Okay, let's get him. Yeah, Luigi's going down. That's right. Where is he? Oh, for a second it showed me Luigi. I'm like, wait, am I Luigi? No, where I don't even know where Luigi is. There she is. DK is so cute. There's Luigi. Sticking Luigi's in the red out. shell. All right, let's get him. Where's now, it? if oh. you get it down one of these pipes, it's come out another pipe. Oh, but we are Luigi's taking oh. a bruising. There Domination. Is my, my attention is going to you. No, get away from me. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're mine. Ooh, woo. All right, Call of Duty skills. Let's go. <laughs> last turn, Rachel, last question. All right. So I'm sure you spend more time than you would ideally like debunking common negative video game myths. And on your channel, Psychgeist, you do such a good job of boiling complex academic topics down to layman terms. So what I would like you to do is giving me is give me somewhat of a debunking video game myths for dummies. So if I'm ever playing my Switch at the airport and some old lady comes up to me and tells me I'm destroying my brain cells, I can quickly <laughs> expose her and get back to my game. Oh, I love it. Mmm. Well, I mean, we can go like. That's my child. I think someone wants to chime in here. Children, he's like, tell him, mom. They just start um... singing. <laughs> just throw them off their game. Yes. Um, video games don't make people violent. Mm. Playing games are not antisocial. Obesity is a side effect of 21st century lifestyle. And I look away for 20 feet every 20 minutes for 20 seconds, so my eyes don't get strained. There you go. So there you are. And you know, I, <clears throat> a line that I like to give and I, and I give a lot when I talk to journalists is, when you look at the research as a whole, it's more positive than negative, the impact of games, and at the very least neutral. Um, so at the end of the day, just across the board, generally speaking, it's more positive than negative. Um, yeah. So. I think I think that, lady. <laughs> that would do the trick, you know, and, yeah. and that's going to be really helpful for me. I'm, now, when I go to the airport and I'm just going to be on the eye for for old ladies. Say, no what, ladies. Do you, what do you want to say to me, ma'am? <laughs> I'm being social. Okay? That's, that's right. Okay. That's right. I'm playing Mario Party. That's right. <laughs> two versus two. And I think we're on the same team here. So we, we got, are. We got here. Let's do it. Puddle paddle. Oh, good. Look, I like that we get to end with a collaborative. Effort. Isn't that nice? Isn't that, that is nice? nice. It's real fun, again, we're playing this with children. Yeah. <laughs> Turn to the left, or really right, I don't know. That'll be the next episode. Inviting, oh, inviting all the children on. Let's cut these guys off. We should, yeah. There we go. I already feel good about this. Get the bag. Yeah, gotta get the bags. Yeah. Avoid yes. the hammers. There we go. There Nine we go. to two. Come on, what are these guys doing? 
Where? Oh, it's down. Come on, give me some oh, points. Uh, uh, turn around, turn around. Let's get a steep turn there. Yeah, Very I good. I threw a little there turn in there. Yeah. Were, were you on crew team or something? No. <laughs> I'm from Texas. You <laughs> think they have that there? <laughs> we had a rodeo team. I was not on that. Oh my uh, God. That would be, I would pay to see Dr. I Mitchell Cohort rodeo on edition. I was the kid, you know, behind the gym, not, not doing good things. <laughs> okay, smoking what? cigarettes. Okay. All right. I didn't know we were, where we were going there. No, I, I should clarify. I feel like that taken out of context, I was smoking cigarettes, which I no longer do because they're bad for you. Do not smoke. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. That's right. You take anything away. Oh, what did Peach get that for? I didn't even see. Something lame, for probably. For being in last place. For I being think. in la last. Everyone's a winner at Mario Everyone's Party. unlucky the bonus. unlucky bonus. That wasn't me, I don't think. I don't think I, it was me either. It's is that going to be Peach again? Peach is going to win now. Oh my God. You see? You see? Unbelievable. That's it. She's going to be the winner because she has three stars now. I think she has four now. She she really cleaned it up there. Next time we're turning bonus stars off. <laughs> oh! That that whoever made this game, they just put this in because you know what? We need one more thing to drive them crazy. That is infuriating. You know, but the nice thing about this, Rachel, is that we don't have to worry about our relationship no. being jeopardized because we can just team up on Peach. We have a shared animosity now. That's exactly it brought that. us closer together. <laughs> Well, Rachel, with that, we managed to maintain the Mario Party relationship. We managed to find a common ground against who the, the princess who I hope never makes an appearance in Pragmatic. She is anything but Pragmatic. She's not invited. How are you feeling? I feel great. And I also don't get to play games very often with other people, so that was a lot of fun. Please let us know what you have going on in your life right now. What should people go check out and where they can follow you? Yes, um, I will have a Kickstarter coming soon for uh, the short stories to come out of the Pragmatic Princess universe. And I talk about that and rant and soapbox and everything. I'm mostly on Twitter, um, at Dr. Cohort. You can find my YouTube content at Sight Guys, where I post pretty regularly about the science of games. And if you want to learn more about our mission at Take This, you can visit takethis.org. And well, thank you so much. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, a comment, and subscribe to digital.games. See you next time.